Ole Nasruddin had a deft hand with a piece of chalk and he couldn't resist drawing graffiti on the public walls or writing truisms on the sidewalk. But one day he was caught by the police and hauled up in front of the magistrate but his behavior was so weird that the magistrate, instead of sending him to jail, sent him to the insane asylum. Now in the insane asylum, he was beset and harassed by all of the lunatics who were in there. So he took out his piece of chalk and he said, silence, stand back. And when everyone dispersed, in shock, he drew a line on the ground and he said, first under the line wins the prize. <laughs> now it's not been decided whether it was because of the horrific injuries <laughs> of those who hit the ground <laughs> or whether it was his ingenuity with his piece of chalk but they released him from the insane asylum. <laughs> now, there's an old story about that very old man called Jacob, as it happens. And Jacob was a very good and a very pious man. All his life he'd followed the tenets of his Jewish religion and all that he'd earned he shared with those in need. But now, being very, very old, he lived on the charity of others and sometimes there was not even bread on his table. But one night, when Yaakov was sitting at his table with his candle lit, reciting his prayers and about to break the piece of bread that had been given him, there was a knock on his door. And when he opened it, there standing outside, leaning on a staff, was a very ancient man who said, I'm a traveler on the road and I wonder, could you give me hospitality for the night? And of course, Jacob welcomed him saying, I have very little to offer, but what I have, I very gladly share with you. So the ancient man uh, sat down at the table with Jacob and they broke bread together and they spent the evening speaking about deep uh, spiritual things and life in general. But as the dawn was coming up, the ancient old man uh, took his leave from Jacob. But just as he was going out of the door, he turned to Jacob and he said, here, here. And he handed Jacob his staff a gnarled piece of wood. And the old man said, this may be of benefit to you. So as the days passed, Jacob would take uh, the staff and use it as a walking stick as he went about the town. But as it happened one day, the staff got stuck in a groove in the pavement. And when he bent down to release the staff, there in the space was a shining piece of silver. And so with this silver, Jacob was able to treat his neighbors and those in need as was his wont to do. And not so long afterwards, 
a group of marauders came in to town to rape and pillage and plunder. But Jacob, with his staff, was able to beat off these bandits. Well, the townspeople were so grateful to Jacob for saving their town that they took up a collection for him to fulfill his greatest wish. Jacob's greatest wish was that before he died that he could travel to the Holy Land. Well, with the collection that was taken, Jacob was able to set out on the wagon that would take him to the ocean that he must cross to get to Israel. But on the way, one of the wheels of the wagon fell off and had to be repaired before that they could continue their journey. So while Jacob was waiting for the reparation of the wagon wheel, he noticed that there was a small hill nearby and he decided to take a walk up that hill. And when he did, when he came to the top, he saw that there was a great tree in full bloom, its majestic branches reaching right up to the heavens. But as Jacob looked up, he saw that there was a severed branch, jagged, broken. And when he looked down at his staff, this gnarled piece of wood, he lifted it up and immediately it reattached itself to the jagged broken edge of the limb. And as he watched, that staff began to grow leaves and break out in the blossom that covered the great tree. Jacob descended the hill and resumed his journey to the ocean that would take him to his destination. When he arrived there, and standing in front of the great wall of prayer, the wailing wall, suddenly a wind blew. And when he looked down, there at his feet was a leaf. And when he picked it up, he realized that this was a leaf from the tree to which his staff had reattached itself, the tree of life. And he thought, ah, my visitor could be none other than the great prophet Elijah who had come with the gift of the star that enabled him to reattach to the great tree, the great tree that is known as the tree of life itself. Last week a story was told also of Sathitha, the great Indian saint who aligned the staff in front of his 
body. And the questions were asked afterwards. What is this star? But we could now ask ourselves, what does this piece of chalk in the mauler's hand or this staff of Jacob mean for us? What is it that grace has given us? And could it be, could it possibly be that this stuff is related to life? Could it be that we brought a circle around to bring a completion which allows now our relationship with life to be that stuff? Could it be? If we ask ourselves, what is it that aligns us? What does this stuff represent that we can place in front of our bodies and immediately, immediately, all is united, nothing is separate? Could it be that this stuff is related to life itself and our relationship with life? If we truly ask ourselves, what is this stuff, this gift of grace? And in our mind, we cannot find something that we can hold on to, like a belief system, a belief in God, a belief in a guru. What are we left with? But what it is that's there in front of us as life, no longer a mirror, no longer bound by cause and effect. Could it be that this stuff is life itself. Ponder on this a while. Again, the question's been asked again and again and again. What is your relationship with life now? And maybe Possibly, we brought the circle around so that we can recognize, indeed, that life is our star. But seek confirmation for yourselves. Life. What is it for you now? What is your relationship with it? It, in all its play, with all its laws, at all levels. What's your relationship with life now? What is this stuff? that we hold at every moment. What is it that never goes away, has always been there since we've taken our first breath? 